Let's learn how to solve these problems using energy principles. The first question says, a 20 kg block which is placed on a rough surface inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal experiences a friction of force of 18 newtons. A constant force F acting parallel to the surface is applied on the block so that the block moves up the incline at a constant velocity of 2 meters per second. The force is then removed at point X. The block continues to move up the incline and comes to rest momentarily at point Y, referred to the diagram below. Make sure you read the statement twice or three times and also note down the given data and also note down important concepts such as moving at a constant velocity and coming to rest. Also know what that tells you. Also make sure in physics that you are able to visualize what happens. Here I will show you what happens. So you can see where the force is removed, but the friction of force is still applied. We know that before point X, the box will move at a constant velocity. So first we'll draw our free body diagram. Here I drew the free body diagram with FG reduced into its components, which is FG parallel and FG perpendicular. Don't forget the inclination angle there is 30 degrees. If you are not sure how to correctly resolve FG into its component, please check out my Newton second law video. So for the first question, we just have to say F net equals to MA, but we know before point X or before the force was removed, the box was moving at a constant velocity. So this means that velocity final equals to velocity initial, and this gives you that the acceleration is zero meters per second squared, making F net equal to zero. What are the forces we are dealing with? These are the forces that are influencing motion. So it's F, which is going in the positive direction, minus fg parallel which is going in the negative direction and minus friction which is also going in the negative direction this all equal to zero remember the equation for fg parallel is mg sine 30 degrees if we take fg parallel and friction to the other side of the equation we can then substitute and find the value for f our mass is 20 G is the gravitational acceleration, which is 9.8, and sine 30 degrees. Our friction of force was given to be 18 newtons. Working this out, we get a force of 116 newtons. And that's your answer for question A. For question B, we have to calculate the distance between point X and point Y. Here we can use a lot of principles, but I will go with the work energy theorem, which says the net work done on an object is equal to the change in its kinetic energy. Let's define the distance between x and y as change in x. Then we can expand the work energy theorem equation to be f net change in x multiplied by the cosine of 180 degrees. As we'll find out the F net in this case, after F is removed, it's going in the negative direction. This is why we have 180 degrees in the work equation. This is equal to kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. First, let's calculate the F net. F net equals to negative FG parallel minus FK. And if we substitute, we get negative 98 for FJ parallel minus 18, which becomes negative 116 newtons. And we can make this a positive value and also indicate that it's going down the incline. When using work energy theorem, please remember to also break FJ into its component. Note that the normal force and FJ perpendicular are equal and they do no work on the object because they are perpendicular to the surface. We can then take the F net that we got and substitute back into the equation and also substitute everything else we get. Cos 180 degrees becomes negative one. 
so that is why we have a negative in front into f net value is 116 into change in x this is equal to half of our mass is 20 kg our velocity final remember the block will come to rest momentarily at point y so our velocity there is zero meters per second this is why we have zero for vf and don't forget your squared minus half of mass is 20 into the velocity at point x just before the force was removed was two meters per second so we substitute that into our equation and we square that now as we can see our only unknown is change in x which we can simply find the value of so our change in x or the distance between point x and y is 0 0.34 meters and that is your final answer for question b if you have further questions on this problem make sure you address them in the comment section here is the second example which will involve work done by non-conservative forces and the conservation of energy it says a 5 kg block is released from rest from a height of 5 meters and slides down a frictionless incline op to point p as shown below it then moves along a frictionless horizontal position pq and finally moves up a second rough inclined plane qr with a friction of force of 80 newtons it comes to a stop at point r which is three meters above the horizontal the question says calculate the angle theta of the slope qr for 12 marks obviously in a typical test this question will be broken down into sections and parts for you to find each value as you proceed so here i'll just ask the final question but we will break the question down and solve for each component as we go on here is the procedure step one divide the motion into three parts part op part pq and part qr step two use a suitable formula to solve for unknowns step three if there's no non-conservative forces use the principle of the conservation of energy if you're not sure on the theory on this chapter make sure you watch the video until the end so that you can see how to join my classes let's look at the motion of the block in the first part we also know that op is frictionless from the information given so we can use the conservation of energy which says the initial mechanical energy is equal to the final mechanical energy so this means the kinetic energy initial plus the potential energy initial equals to the final kinetic energy and the final potential energy now let's cancel all the terms that are zero we are told that the block is released from rest so the initial kinetic energy is zero the initial potential energy is not zero because we have a five meter height note that the block doesn't stop at point p so the final kinetic energy is not zero but at point P, there's no height, so the final potential energy is zero. We will show the cancel terms as zeros in our substitution. Mass is five, our gravitational acceleration is 9.8. Our height initial from the ground to point O is five meters. This is equal to half of our mass is five, velocity final squared. Then we see that the only unknown is velocity final. And if we use our calculators, we'll see that the final velocity at point P is 9,9 .9 meters per second. Then we can see what happens from point P to point Q. We are also told that point PQ is frictionless, so we can use the same principle of conservation of energy. Notice that PQ is on the ground, so the potential energy initial is the same as the potential energy final which is just zero by conservation of mechanical energy we can deduce that the kinetic energy initial is the same as the kinetic energy final now the half and m will cancel leaving vi squared equals to vf squared then if you take the square root of both sides you'll see that the velocity of p is actually the same as the velocity of q which is now 9,9 .9 meters per second this is due to the fact that there's no friction on track PQ. 
Now let's move over to the last stretch of the road, which is QR. In this case, we notice that there is friction, so we're going to use the work done by non-conservative forces equal to the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. If we expand that equation, the work done by non-conservative forces is only one force, which is friction. So we substitute that with the work done by friction of force equal to kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial plus potential energy final minus potential energy initial. Let's let the distance between Q and R be change in X. And then friction is applied in the opposite direction of motion. So we will have cos 180 degrees multiplied by that friction of force. And now we can cancel the terms that we know are zero. The final kinetic energy at point R, we are told that the block will come to a stop at point R, so that is zero. The initial kinetic energy is not zero because at point Q, the block will have a velocity. The final potential energy at point R is not zero because point R is at a height. But the potential energy initial at point Q is zero because that is at the ground. So we can cancel that term as well. Now for the substitution, notice that we can express change in X as a function of theta. So we say on the QR triangle, sine theta equals to the opposite side, which is three divided by the hypotenuse, which is the length of QR. And then we say changing x as that length. So if we cross multiply, our change in x will be given by 3 over sine theta. So cos 180 degrees on our substitution becomes a negative. Our value for friction of force is 18. And our change in x in green there is 3 over sine theta. This is equal to 0 for the final kinetic energy minus half of 5 into 9,90 for the initial kinetic energy squared plus 5 into 9,8 times 3 as the potential energy final minus 0 for the potential energy at point Q. Then we notice that the only unknown there is theta. And then you can be able to solve for that using your basic mathematics and you'll find a value of 33,4 degrees. That is your final answer for this question. If you have further questions, address them in the comment section. The final question says, A pendulum with a bob of mass 5 kg is held stationary at a height h meters above the ground. When released, it collides with a block of mass 2 kg, which is stationary at point A. The bob then swings past A and comes to rest momentarily at position quarter h above the ground. Immediately after the collision, the 2 kg block begins to move from A to B at a constant speed of 4.95 meters per second. Ignore frictional effects and assume that no loss of mechanical energy occurs during the collision. Calculate the height H. Remember to list down as neatly as possible all your given data. This makes your life easier when you substitute. Okay, let's look at an animation of what happens in this problem. So the bob or the circle thingy at the end of the pendulum is held at a height h. When we release it, it's going to hit the block, which is now going to move at 4.95 meters per second. And the bob itself is going to go to a certain height, which is a fraction of 1.4 of the initial height. Okay, now no loss of mechanical energy what does that tell you this tells you that the collision is elastic which means you can take the sum of the mechanical energy initial of the two objects and equal that to the sum of the mechanical energy final this is basically the same equation as the conservation of mechanical energy for reference purposes i'll let the bob be one and i'll color all the terms for the bob as purple and I'll let the block be object 2 and I'll color them. So the sum of mechanical energy initial on the left means we have to add the kinetic energy initial 
for the block and for the bob and also add the potential energy initial for the block and for the bob so here's what the equation will look like so the initial mechanical energy of the bob plus the initial mechanical energy of the block equal to the final mechanical energy of the bob plus the final mechanical energy of the block now we will go term by term cancelling all the terms that are zeros first we see the equation for the kinetic energy of the bob initial so we know we held it stationary at a height of h so the initial kinetic energy of the bob is zero because there's no initial velocity the second term is the potential energy of the bob initial we are told that it is held at an initial height of h so that term is not zero plus the initial kinetic energy of the block we were told that the block is stationary at point a so there is no initial velocity for the block so that terms becomes zero what about the potential energy initial for the block the block is on the ground at point a so the potential energy is zero because there is no height notice that now we were dealing with the initials for the mechanical energy of the two objects we equate that to their finals mechanical energies but the first term after the equal sign is the kinetic energy final for the bob is the bob moving in the final stage of this problem no there's no final velocity for the bob so that terms becomes zero does the bob have potential energy at the final stage yes it is still at a height which is at a fraction of a quarter of the initial height so that term still remains plus the kinetic energy final for the block does the block move at the final stage yes there is final velocity for the block so that term for the block remains does the block have the final potential energy no because the block is still on the ground so that terms become zero now let's see what terms we are remaining with this is the potential energy of the bob initial equals to the potential energy of the bob final plus the kinetic energy of the block final now if we substitute our values that we noted down the mass of the bob is 5 kg the height of the bob initial was h this is equal to the mass of the bob is to 5 the height of the bob final is 1 over 4 h plus half of the mass of the block which is 2 kg multiplied by the final velocity squared for the block which is 4,95 meters per second don't forget your squared after that substitution we see that we only have one unknown which is the h so you can use your math to find the value of h which will work out to be 0 0.67 meters and that is the final answer for this question for seven marks okay guys make sure you like the video you comment and you share with your friends and most importantly you subscribe to this channel this will help the channel grow please note that you can join my live classes for theory in grade 10 to grade 12 physical sciences and mathematics just whatsapp me and then we'll take it from there Cheers, guys.